There are uh, three different basic transistor uh, circuits. And then I mean the application of a transistor, the grounded emitter, the grounded base and the grounded collector circuit. And when you search on the World Wide Web, you will surely find more information about it. And in this video I want to show a circuit that is, say, not often um, explained, but could be anyway, uh, the grounded base circuit. And that's here. I made a demonstration circuit here. The whole setup is out of an old book of the 1970s. Though I had to do some uh, adaptations to that circuit, but anyway. The grounded emitter circuit has a few very, sorry, the grounded base circuit has a few very important properties. And especially the extremely low input impedance. That means that you can say uh, solder in, connect a coil directly to a uh, normal transistor, say a bipolar transistor. And we know that one of the properties of a bipolar transistor is that it has a very low input impedance. So not ideal, but uh, this circuit is especially suited to say really connect a coil here at the input and after that of course a coil is a very low impedance um, um, thing. And after that, the energy of the coil that's received into the coil is sent to the grounded base transistor circuit. And that's here. Here is at the bias of the transistor. And I found experimentally that that is very critical. So let me show that. This is a 22k potentiometer a 1k resistor here to prevent a too high base current that can damage the transistor. And let's see what happens. At the moment I'm sending in a uh, 10k signal and now it's a 100k 100,000 Hertz signal that has everything to do with the good properties and you can also see the good linearity. So this is um, uh, 1000K, 1000 kilohertz, kilocycles and this is uh, 10 kilocycles I have to adapt my scope and this is one kilohertz and you can see that the amplification is constantly the same and this is 100 hertz. So let's go to one kilohertz for the best view of this uh, circuit anyway. Uh, the uh, like I told, it's very important that the input impedance is extremely low, so that's a good thing. Here are the general things to tell about the grounded base circuit. Input impedance very low, output impedance very high. We can talk about that, we can dis discuss that. Current amplification is say 1, like I found on a certain website, but anyway, voltage amplification high, max frequency 
that such a circuit can handle is very high. And I've showed that because this simple circuit with a BC507 can work on uh, between say 50 Hz and say uh, 100 kilohertz or even more. The reason is that my generator doesn't go so high. Well, let's give it a maximum. It's now uh, let's see what it can bring. 1000 kilohertz. And now we we see a kind of uh, dip in the output energy, but we are on uh, 111 multiplied by 100,000. So that's that's quite a lot. Anyway, back to the circuit. I experimented uh, a lot with this circuit and found, for instance, that. There are a few important parameters. Uh, C1 is a very important parameter. Uh, it sets, in fact, the amplification. So when C1 is 1 microfarad, and C3 is 1 microfarad, and C2 is 100 microfarad, remember we are talking in the audio range for UHF or VHF. You of course have to use a UHF or a VHF transistor, but anyway, this is the audio range, and um, here are the amplification factors. When C1 is 1 microfarad, the amplification is 3, but when C1 is 220 microfarad, the amplification is 20. And under these circumstances, my test C3 and C2 had the same value. So I think it's a very useful circuit, uh, especially when you have a very low impedance source. You can see here that there is a 10 ohm resistor, so when it is a coil or whatever, uh, the amplification can be set to say 20 times and of course after this the output can be sent into a grounded emitter um, amplifier and then amplified say a hundred times or so or whatever. For high frequencies you need a typical high frequency transistor. All these values are for really high frequency applications far too high. And when you study high frequency grounded based uh, transistor circuits on the World Wide Web or in certain schematics, you will often see that these capacitors have a very low value and that has everything to do with their properties um, for, say, the frequency band where such a grounded uh, base amplifier has to work could be 100 megahertz or 200 megahertz or even 300 megahertz and in such a case these capacitors are in general very low low values this is the bias and I find it was critical I've already showed it let me show it again effect of the bias on the highest frequency that we have here, so uh, more than 100 kilo cycles, you can see that it suddenly stops. There's a very, very critical point here where it, wor where it works and where it doesn't work. Let's go back to another frequency, say. Um, 1000 Hertz. Going back now to 1000 Hertz. 
have to turn the knob, take some time. So, one, and we have here 1000 Hz. And, of course, <laughs> the mistake that I make now is that the bias is not, not properly. So, I now set the, that bias here. Let's see what happens. On a certain moment we must see a very good, say, waveform. Yes, here it is. So, this is 1000 Hz. And let me show again how critical that bias is here. Turn it now. Very, very, very critical. Anyway, so um, of course in serious circuits uh, on in radios um, where the grounded uh, base transistor is used, often with a typical high frequency. Uh, transistor, you don't find this bias potentiometer. There are fixed values here, and that's of course interesting. Uh, when you have aligned that transistor to its proper bias, proper working point, solder the whole potentiometer here out, solder it completely out, measure the resistance value between these electrodes, this one and that one and that one, and then replace it by a fixed value resistor. Of course, it has everything to do with the working voltage, the voltage on which such a transistor circuit works, very uh, dependent on the, in relation to the bias that the transistor needs. So here are the experimental results. I have already showed them on the oscilloscope. Uh, 1 kilohertz C1, 1 microfarad, C2 and C3. And uh, you can see that uh, say the input capacitor plays a very important role. Uh, in how much the after all, the uh, grounded base transistor amplifies. And I've already showed this on the scope, etc. So I think a very interesting circuit to do experiments with. For instance, usable in a uh, magnetodynamic dynamic uh, pickup. A grounded base, you can use here that magnetodynamic coil that picks up the sound, uh, etc. Very low input impedance, amplification of say 20 times, That's, that are very, very good properties. This is one microfarad, non-polar. One microfarad, non-polar. The bias potentiometer, the BC547, NPN silicon transistor that can amplify up to 9 MHz. The say emitter resistor of say 10 ohms and the capacitor that goes from the base to ground.